Hey guys, Corey here. If we haven't met before, I am a holistic health coach and super passionate about helping you to live your very best life. On today's YouTube, I want to talk about something that's very vulnerable for me and just near and dear to my heart because I think it's something that's become an epidemic in the United States and tons of people battle with this and they suffer with it in silence because there is so much shame attached to it that people are afraid to talk about it because they're afraid that they're going to be looked down upon or people are going to walk away from them and so they deal with it and don't know where to go and that is anxiety and depression. So I, as a kid, I'm just going to dive right into this right now and just share my testimony because I want you to know today, if you are walking through this, you're not alone. And that's why I want to share about it. So I'm going to dive right in and talk about starting from when I was like a little girl. I would be what you would have classified as a worrier and someone who worried about everything and, and that worrying over time, you know, would wreak havoc on my stomach. I would have stomach problems. I would second guess myself. I would be, you know, different situations that were out of my control. I would worry about them. And here's the thing, worrying, this is one of my favorite quotes. Worrying doesn't empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength because essentially the root of worry is control. It's taking your hands like this and saying, I have control. I'm going to control something. And if I feel like I can't, I'm going to worry because I think that worrying is going to control the situation when in reality it's not, right? So that is essentially what I really started walking through as a kid, okay? So fast forward, I go to college, get married right out of college, about 23 years old, I start experiencing what we would call a panic attack where I would be out of breath. All of a sudden, I felt like I couldn't breathe. I was hyperventilating. My fingers and hands and arms would go numb. My heart would be pounding. Even my lungs would kind of hurt because just I think from the shallow breathing and I would feel like I had to run almost just like I, in my own skin, it was like, get me out of my own skin kind of feeling just to keep it real. And so I had like one every here and there. And then it started to become something that was like every day. And once you start having them, so for those of you who've had them, you totally know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, I'm going to explain it. So what happens is once you have the panic attack, you start to feel nervous about having another panic attack. So then constantly it becomes this, like, am I going to have one? Or what if I'm at the mall and I have one? What if I'm at church and I have one? What if I'm driving in my car and I have one? What if I'm here and I have one? And if, and first of all, let me say this here in my speech, I'm constantly saying, what if, right? And that's the first problem right there. So once you start to fear these panic attacks and say, what if, what if, what if, what if, guess what? Everywhere you go, you experience panic attacks, right? So then it became where I couldn't even drive. I would be like driving a half a mile down the road to the Starbucks. And I don't even know how I made it, you guys, because there were times I was hyperventilating so bad that I don't even know how I made it there. And, and when you have a panic attack, one of the biggest things that people fear is that they're going to pass out because you kind of feel like you're going to pass out. But let me tell you something. Nobody ever passes out. So once I kind of got past that, that helped. So it became for me this thing where I literally couldn't go anywhere. And so here I am newly married and my husband's like, well, what do you mean we can't go out to dinner? Or, what do you mean we can't go to church? Or what do you mean we can't go out with friends? And of course he didn't quite understand because he wasn't experiencing it. So here's me, the person struggling with the panic, right? And I had the best intentions. I want to go to dinner with my friends. I want to go to church. I want to drive to the mall. I want to go sit through a movie. But I couldn't do any of it because all of a sudden, like you say, yeah, let's meet at the mall. And then as it gets closer to the time, all of a sudden you're like, what if I have a panic attack in the mall? What if I hyperventilate? And whenever you're feeling that way, you just feel like you have to escape, right? And if you feel like you can't escape, it's even worse. I'm like, well, what if I'm there 
and I feel like I have to go and run out of the mall and I'm with a friend? Or what if they see me have the panic attack and think I'm crazy? Because you think you're going crazy. And funny thing is, nobody can even tell you're having one, but you think the whole world can tell. So then that led to me like canceling things all the time. So we make plans for dinner, the last minute I cancel. We make plans to go to church, I cancel. And it gets to this point where I'm pretty close to housebound because I literally am this fear of these panic attacks. And in reality, it's our body. You know, when we're, when we're having a panic attack or depression, it's our body's way of saying, hello, that's enough. I've had enough of the worrying that you've done your whole life and all the stuff you put me through. And, and so now I'm giving you a signal. This is wreaking havoc on you, right? So essentially that's really what it is. It's a, your body saying something's wrong, like stop, you know, stop with all this abuse you've put me through. So I literally lost so many friends because people didn't understand. And I didn't know how to explain it to people. And it was embarrassing and it was shameful. And it was something that not a lot of people talked about back then. So I felt like, well, I can't do that, talk about it. Or if you talk to someone, they look at you like you're absolutely crazy because they've never experienced it. So they think like, what's wrong with you? So people, instead of coming around me and caring about me when I was going through it, people walked away. And I lost some really close friends because they didn't get it and I couldn't explain it properly. And it was one of the hardest things I've ever gone through in my life. And then when you start to become housebound all the time, first of all, you, you just feel scared in your own skin because you're constantly having these panic attacks. So you just don't ever feel calm and you're like, you feel like you're dying or going to pass out. Okay. And then when you're there in the house and just isolated and going through and you're, you wish so badly that you could be done with it. Right. You start to feel depressed and so I started feeling like all of those things even though anxiety was the root of it I still had some of the depression because of just all I was feeling with the anxiety okay so this went on for a while and I just remember feeling so defeated and feeling so scared and I remember crying out to God and saying God like where are you like, I don't want this. I don't want to struggle with this anymore. And I remember just praying all the time and listening to worship music and just being like, please heal me. Like, I don't want to struggle with this anymore. And I continued to struggle. And there were times, you guys, that I got so low that I'd be like, I don't want to live anymore. If I, because you almost feel like you're living in a cage. You're in this cage and you're like, I can't get out. I want to get out, but I can't. And you're like trapped in your own body. And I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to live if I have to go through this. There's no purpose of living. I can't even do anything with my life right now because I'm housebound. And then it wreaks havoc on your gut because you're constantly feeling this. And then I started like not being able to eat and losing weight. And it was just like a whole gamut of things. And I just remember feeling so defeated and so alone and like, honestly, just be like, God, where are you? Like, why won't you take this away from me? Like I'm praying and I'm, I'm reading Bible verses about trust. And so often like people don't understand what you're going through. So, so many people will be like, oh, you just need to trust God more. You just need to get over it. Or you just need to do this. Not realizing like, it's not that easy. And I was doing a lot of those things and my body was still struggling with it because once you get into that mode your body is in you know think about if you're like chasing a bear right um your body is going to go into fight or flight mode and your body's going to give you that adrenaline rush so that you can run away from that bear so you don't get eaten <laughs> so that is essentially what it feels like with a panic attack you're constantly in that fight or flight mode and it's really hard on your body and so I just remember struggling and struggling and struggling with it. And I had grown up in a family where my parents were really involved at in our church and I, they were leaders and I felt like I had to be a leader. I had to have it all together. I had to say the right thing and do the right thing and, and be that strong person for everybody else in my life. So you can imagine when I started to suffer with this, you, you know, you start to feel so weak and you're like, I can't let people in. I can't let people really know that I'm going through this because I look weak. I don't look strong or, vul or you know, um, leader for these people. And <clears throat> I remember 
one night, I mean, I, I just, I couldn't go on anymore. It was to the point where like I was a teacher at the time. My husband would have to drive me to school for my job, pick me up from school because I could barely drive. And I would have multiple panic attacks throughout the day at school and not even, I don't even know how I made it through the day. And I finally, one night, they were the hardest words I had to say. And it seems simple maybe to you, but to me it wasn't because it was something that, because I felt like I had to have it all together and not let people in, it was hard to, to be vulnerable. And let me tell you, if I learned anything from this experience, it is to be vulnerable because none of us have it together. No matter what you're going through, it might not be this at all, it might be something else, but the more we can be vulnerable with each other and the more we can talk about what we're really going through, the more that I think the struggle is less and we're able to overcome it quicker and the more that we can really have deep relationships with people. You can't have deep relationships with people when you're shallow and have a surface level uh, friendship. So that night I remember sitting down with my husband and said some of the hardest words I've said. I said, I need help. I need help. I can't do this anymore. I can't live like this. I don't even want to live. I don't know what my purpose is. And this was at a time where I'm a musician. If uh, those of you didn't, that don't know that. And it was a time where I really felt the Lord telling me, I'm asking you to actually s- travel and sing and, and do music. And I'm like, God, I can't do that. I can't even leave my house. I can't even, you know, drive or let alone get up on a stage. Come on now. I was like, how can I get on stage? I can't get on stage. But as we know, God uses people, broken people, like Moses who had a speech impediment. He uses people that don't have it all together. And I remember different times while I was going through it, being asked to sing at different events and thinking, I can, my breathing is so shallow from this panic attack. I don't know how I'm going to do this. And you know what? Every time I would get up there and I would feel this peace and I would be able to sing and then I would come down and I might struggle with it again. But every time I got up on the stage, I had peace. So those words of I need help, right? are some of the hardest, but some of the most healing words you and I will ever say, because that was the beginning of my healing. And I found this incredible program by this lady named Lucinda Bassett. I'm just gonna share her name because if you are struggling with this, she has an incredible um, DVD, CD, workbook series called Attacking Anxiety and Depression. And it was like a 12 week thing. And you guys, I had to dig down to the depths of my soul and all the things that I had believed for so long because really what I had to do is retrain my brain, right? Because like I told you before, control. If I can't control the situation, I think I'm controlling it by worrying. But it's a false control because I don't have control, right? And so a lot of what I, even in the program, some of the biggest takeaways were just instead of always saying, What if, what if, what if, what if? So what? So what if I pass out? I'll get back up and I'll be okay. So what if I have a panic attack? I've always recovered from them. I will again. And guess what? That was so key for me because then I started to not be so fearful of the panic attacks. And when I'm not fearful of the panic attacks, guess what? They stopped happening so often. And then I had to slowly like just retrain those thoughts and lies. So many of us believe so many lies and they could be different things. For me, it was a lot with worrying and a lot of it with health and thinking I was dying of cancer or things like that. And I had to retrain how I think and how I process things. And then it was slowly going and doing those things that felt so hard. That are seem stupid probably to some of you who don't struggle with this, but like going to the mall and saying, I'm gonna go to the mall because it felt enclosed. And when you struggle with panic, that's a hard one. And saying, I'm gonna go to the mall. And even if my husband's in the other store in case I need him, I'm gonna take that step and go into the mall by myself. I'm gonna drive, you know, three miles by myself. And as I slowly started doing all that, I started finding so much healing and they were happening less and less and less. And another big thing 
In this part, I'm going to dive in a lot deeper in a second part. This is just the first part of my anxiety story. This is my personal story and testimony. But the next video I'm going to do is going to be all about the nitty gritty, like practical things that you can actually do with your diet and supplements and exercise and things like that to combat it also. And so I'm just going to share a little bit about that right now um, as far as like what worked for me, but then I will go into so much more detail because what some people don't understand is a lot of it can be physiological things in your body that are off. So it's not necessarily just like, oh, you're just a worrier. Some of it can be physical things. And as I started to realize, I found out my body makes too much adrenaline. Well, boom, boom, boom. That's partially why I, you know, was struggling with this and my hormones were off. And ladies, our hormones have a big effect on our mental health. And same with my gut. If our guts are off, our gut makes 80% of our serotonin. And so if it's off, guess what's off? Our serotonin. And so all of these different factors were actually huge parts into why I struggled with panic attacks and anxiety. So some practical things for my life, I changed my diet so that I could work on healing my hormones, work on healing my gut, and then also I started to exercise. And let me tell you, if you haven't heard this before, just like 20 to 30 minutes of exercise is like taking a low dose of an antidepressant. And all those endorphins and all of that are so good for your mental health. Because so many people see it as just like, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to, you know, get in shape. And really, your mental health is a huge part of it that gets kind of left out. And so doing that made all the difference and just balancing out all these different systems in my body that were off, right? So doing all of that along with retraining my mind and saying, so what if? And speaking truth. I am a good singer. I am able to, you know, go do this, like speaking positive because negative thinking, and I was the queen of negative thinking about myself, about life, about situations in life, that messes your brain. Gratitude and thankfulness and speaking positive about yourself, that retrains the brain waves, right? So I started to do that and even I wrote stuff on cards because I just needed the reminder that no, I'm not going to go there, right? And so all of this, now this was a process. This was not boom, boom, boom. You know, this was several years of me working hard because I didn't want to just say, I'm going to pop a pill for the rest of my life. Now, there is a time and place for medication to help. So please don't hear me say that at all. But for me, I really wanted to get to the root. Why am I having this? What's going on? Why is my body doing this? And like I said, it was multifaceted from negative thinking and brain and worrying and things to different parts of my body systems that were off. So it was all encompassing. And I really do believe we're mind, body, spirit. And so that was definitely true with this. And so I, um, I found like doing all of that over a process of time, um, they, they completely left. Done. And I also learned balance in my life. Like I can't be busy, 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 busy running everywhere all the time. And I'm always someone who said yes to everyone because I didn't want to disappoint and I wanted to people please. Getting rid of the people pleasing and, and learning boundaries and saying no when I had to say no so I could say yes to the right things and having an hour of downtime in my day. All of that was key for me and my healing from this. And then the neatest part about it all is as I healed from all of this, I did start to travel and I sang and I went all over and did concerts. And the coolest part about it is I always shared my story because going through this, even though during the time I felt so alone, I felt like, what is my purpose? I don't even want to be on this earth anymore if I have to do with this. Like, God, just take my life. But here's the thing. We all have purpose. We all have purpose. And I look back at what I walked through now and I say, I'm thankful I walked through it because it made me a different person. It has made me vulnerable. 
It has made me want to help other people who go through something like this. And it's made me just empathetic. And because we all have things that we have to work through. And, and even if it's something totally different than what I'm saying, a lot of times the root is control, even though we're not in control. And they just, and they just manifest themselves in different ways. And mine was anxiety and worry. And the truth is, is God's in control. And, and, and really knowing that and trusting him and that, that made such a difference. And just to like go, it made me a different singer, a different, um, just a different person. And I would go to concerts and when I would share, I would always share my story. And I'm like, people might think I'm crazy, but I'm going to share my story because it's a big part of who I am. And every time I would finish people will come up to me after that were walking through it and they felt like no one understood them and that they were going through alone and that it really encouraged them that someone else had been through it. And so I just, I wanted to share all that tonight because I want you to know if you're walking through this, you're not alone. And I want you to see that like someone like me, I had it very severe and I walk in complete freedom and healing right now from it. And you can too. And even if this isn't what you're struggling with, maybe it's something else. Maybe it's an eating disorder. Maybe it's, I don't know, you know. And at the end of the day, like all of it is, is retraining our brain and, and also, you know, keeping our mind, body, and spirit completely balanced. That's another huge part of it. But you don't have to live like this forever. And you don't have to um, struggle with this for the rest of your life. Because I think as soon as we say this, because here, here we are clenched on trying to be in control, as soon as we open our hands and relinquish the control, it's amazing how many incredible things happen, how much freedom we experience, how many things that we didn't want to do because we were afraid or, or wanted to be in control. And as soon as we did it anyway and got rid of the control, we reap the reward and so many cool things in our life that we would never experience if we stayed and we lived in that fear and control. And for me, a big one was even having a baby. I was deathly afraid to have a baby. And as soon as I did it, anyway, I did it scared. I have a daughter and it was the most beautiful gift I could ever have. And I have another one coming and I would have missed out on it had I allowed my fear to control me for the rest of my life. And so I'm just here to encourage you that you don't have to And the best words that you can say if you're battling this tonight or anything that you're battling that's taking control over your life, I need help. And get the help, however you need to do that. And I promise you, when you come out on the other side and you feel free, you're going to feel so amazing and you're going to see so many things in your life come to fruition that you wouldn't have if you stayed there. And then you are going to help so many other people who are struggling to overcome by sharing your story. And that's why it's so important that all of us are vulnerable. We share stories. We dispel the lies. We're open with people. We don't have to have a surface relationship. And so I'm just here to say that tonight. And I just want to encourage you that it's not hopeless. You're not hopeless. And you have a purpose on this earth. I just hope this encourages you tonight. And please leave comments in the comment section on YouTube if you have questions or things, reach out to me if you're struggling with this because I would love to talk with you. And if there's more things you want me to answer or talk about in regards to this, leave it in the comment section. But thank you so much for listening to my story. And like I said, I'm going to be doing a part two and that's going to be more just some really practical tips and things that could be off in your body that you can fix with your diet and your exercise and specific supplements and things like that. So I hope you guys have a really good day and thank you again for listening.